Namaste, everyone. My name is Molly Hogan with the Massachusetts Small Business Development Center Network. Here, at my office is located in Springfield, Massachusetts, and we cover the entire Pioneer Valley, Hamden, and Franklin, in Hampshire County. Thank you for joining us today for another webinar aimed for business owners who are looking to reopen their business. But this is also today's webinar is also for every time of the year where you're using Facebook to connect with customers and market your business. We're gonna be giving you a lot of tips, very specific tips and step-by-step -step instructions on how to do some of the tasks that you can do on Facebook. Thank you to Kate uh, Shreka today from a video bank who's our presenter. And before we get started, I wanna thank all of our partners who are helping make these webinars possible, helping us recruit speakers and also pass the word. And they're all available at your disposal to answer questions and help you with your business. Those partners are the Small Business Development Center, SCORE, the Center for Women Enterprise, Common Capital, Valley Community Development, and Franklin County CDC. Their contact information is on your screen and you can feel free to email any of those partners with any questions you have about your business. Thank you so much to everyone. Also to our stakeholders, the Small Business Administration, the State of Massachusetts Executive Office of Housing and Economic Development, as well as UMass Amherst. Thank you so much for your sponsorship and for the funding to make sure that these programs exist. Without further ado, I wanna invite Kate to start her presentation. And again, I wanna remind you, if you have any questions, use the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen or um, raise your hand. Thank you so much. Go ahead, Kate. Great, thank you for having me today. I'm gonna to share my screen here so you can see my presentation. All right. So uh, just some quick background on me. My name is Kate Suica and I work over at Avidia Bank. Uh, I handle our communications and social media, PR and so forth. And I teach a lot about social media and different speaking engagements and also uh, with CWE. So really excited to be here and share more about some Facebook how-tos with all of you today. Um, a lot of the things that we're gonna talk about are very specific features in Facebook. So if you're already using it, whether on a personal level or on a you know, business page level, uh, these will be some easy tips for you to be able to use and implement some different tactics for your marketing strategy. Uh, and then we'll also uh, talk about some ideas and content ideas for reopening, which has been on everybody's mind uh, lately. And I know particularly here in the Northeast in Massachusetts. So today, these are the things that we're going to cover. We're going to look at scheduling a post, uh, event pages, how to leverage Facebook groups, using Facebook Marketplace for e-commerce strategy, Facebook Messenger for customer care, boosting posts versus creating an advertisement, defining and saving your audiences for ads, and then some reopening ideas, as I mentioned. So the first thing we're going to go into is scheduling posts. Now, why would you typically schedule a post? Well, I'll tell you for me, um, managing social media every single day, it saves me a lot of time, but particularly, let's say if you have an event. So if you're putting on a webinar, such as the webinar today, uh, maybe you're putting on a couple of posts leading up to it that you have scheduled out maybe every couple of days. And then one right before the webinar starts as a reminder, right? So it's easy to schedule that out. I do try to tell people when you're scheduling posts, some of the best practices are to uh, schedule maybe only one week in advance, uh, particularly now. Right now, things are changing in this environment, but you know things can change at any time. Your plans might change. You might forget that you scheduled something months in advance. So try to schedule maybe only a week or two ahead of time. You can schedule through right directly through Facebook, which is what I'm gonna show you today. Um, but you can also use tools like Hootsuite, social, Sprinkler, there's all kinds of other tools that you can do to schedule posts as well. I will give one quick tip too, that this is only available for business pages. So if you're looking to schedule a post on your personal page, you're not able to do so. So let's get into how to schedule a post for your business page. So when you're looking at your business page, you can go right into here and you can see this is where you would normally post something. So you might post something like a photo or a video or maybe you're posting about a feeling, maybe there's a Facebook Live event that you're hosting or an event, you can post it right through here. And this is where most of us will go to post on Facebook. And when you do this, you can go down and click, oops, you can go down and click schedule. 
So schedule here will allow you to select a date and time. You can also backdate a post. So let's say you wanted to post something that happened a couple of days ago, but you wanted it to show up um, at that with that date and time stamp. I know a lot of people do this for like their milestones. Maybe they were too busy during like a ribbon cutting event or an anniversary, but they really wanted to remember that during that specific date. So you can back backdate that as well. And you can see here that there's all different types of posts that you can put together. So you can do all those things and put them in here um, and schedule those out as well. So things like watch parties or writing a note or tagging some sort of product. So these are all ways that you can do that as well. And so when you hit that schedule button, this is what you're going to see. So you're going to see the date, you can put in the time. Uh, usually the time zone is set by whatever you have set in your preferences. And then you'll see at the bottom here, you can also click distribution schedule. So let's say you have a special offer that's only running during a particular time and you want to stop offering that, let's say on May 31st. So what you would do is you would click stop newsfeed distribution and you would put in that date. So it wouldn't show up to people later on. So here's another way that you can go in and schedule posts. And this is where you can schedule multiple posts and you can also go in and edit posts that you've already published or put together. So if you look on your Facebook page, and this is on your business page, once again, you go up to publishing tools. And from here, you're gonna click on scheduled posts on the left-hand side. And what you'll see is all of the published posts that are right under where it says in the big blue scheduled posts there. And from there, you can edit your posts, you can um, change the dates, you can change some of the content, maybe you wanna swap out a link or an image. You're able to do that all right within here. And using this create button, that's right here in this corner too, you can also create a bunch of posts and schedule them out really easily too. So this is a great way to go in and schedule out your posts, like I said, for a week in advance. And you're able to just hit create and then create each individual post. And then you can see it all outlined here for you. So that way you can see, okay, I'm posting once on Monday, once on Tuesday, once on Wednesday. Oh, I missed Thursday. I should put something in for Thursday. So you can see where you're maybe missing content and you can reschedule from there. Also, if you've ever written a post and you saved as a draft, this is where you can also find it. And for those posts that we wanted um, to stop newsfeed distribution, you can also find those here and you can change those dates under expiring posts as well or republish them. So now let's move on to event pages. Now I know what you're probably thinking right now, there's not a lot of events going on. So why would I use an event page? But I think it's really valuable that even if you're doing a virtual event or doing some sort of meetup, it's really valuable to host it as an event page. That way, when people RSVP to your event, they're able to continuously see reminders of that event and Facebook will auto generate some of those reminders. So you don't always even have to do that as a business. So here's some ideas for event pages. They're great for in-person and virtual events. So whether you're doing a grand reopening when you're able to open your doors again to your business, or you're just hosting a virtual event, like a webinar such as this, or um, I've been seeing some people doing virtual trivia, things like that. Um, live streams are a great idea. And then there's some other ideas here too. So like demos or how to. Um, I've been seeing a lot of businesses doing open office hours and hosting Q&A, which I think is a really cool way to use events. Showing behind the scenes, you know, do a behind the scenes tour of what's going on. Uh, there's been all kinds of virtual 5K races going on out there too. Um, and I've even seen some people host some film festivals. So uh, this is a really great way that you can just host events and put it out there onto your Facebook page. You can also sell tickets directly through Facebook or Eventbrite. So some of the things that happen a lot of times with events is we think, oh, it's only free. Or um, when we put it out there, you know, we, you know, we, we want to sell tickets, but it's kind of tedious or who's going to actually show up. So you can tie this into Eventbrite and actually sell tickets, even if it's for a five, $10, $30 or whatnot for your event. And you can link that right into your event page. Another tip here too, is to make it a recurring event. So you can make it an event that happens the first Saturday of every month, if you'd like, um, or maybe something that you have pretty frequently. So I'm going to show you some examples of some good events coming up. So as I mentioned, virtual trivia, this is something that we've seen a lot of people put uh, Lost Shoe Brewing Company put it together. 
they've been doing this and managing it through um, a live stream on Facebook and then doing the trivia submissions through Google Docs and just sharing it in the event page. So that's an idea. This is another one. So this is somebody, the Blender Girl, she shared um, somebody who actually jumped in and talked all about tomatoes and, you know, might not be totally related to what, um, you know, she's doing in terms of her blog and being an influencer with the Blender Girl, but it is food related. So just showing some relevant content. So she put together an event page with a live video launch um, to do a QA and a um, with this guest speaker. So that's another way to go about it. And then here's a really good example of, you know, maybe in-person events that you had planned, but maybe you have to reschedule to do virtual events. So Volturno, um, they're like a pizza shop that's in Worcester and Framingham, and they've been able to uh, take what they would normally do in person for their pasta classes, and they've been transforming these events to live streams and then having people come by and pick up like a make your own pasta kit or providing recipes to those who aren't super local and can pick it up and then doing a live stream. Um, and actually they've been doing one almost once a week lately. So not just once a month, but they've been doing it almost once a week and it's been very popular. So those are just a few ideas of some virtual events to get you started. Obviously, uh, you know, there's a world of other events out there when we can start attending them in person as well. So now I'm going to move into Facebook groups and Facebook groups can be leveraged in a lot of different ways. Um, you can use this on your personal page if you like. You can also um, participate to some degree in Facebook groups as a business as well. Um, some Facebook group, groups pro prohibit businesses from joining. Um, some of them allow businesses to join and speak on behalf of their business. So definitely take a look there and we'll go through some of those guidelines that um, guide some of the Facebook groups as well. So some of the benefits for using a Facebook group. Um, a lot of people ask a lot of questions inside Facebook groups. So you can find questions that maybe will let you demonstrate your expertise, or specialized skills. Uh, you can answer the questions outright, uh, share a helpful blog post or an article, or even mention your own products and services from time to time. Now, you might have to answer some questions to be admitted to the group and your post may also be moderated. So uh, just know that sometimes when you post it, it may not immediately show because somebody, whoever runs the group, the administrator may want to review all of those posts. And one thing um, that I will mention just as a tip here, if you are posting is um, I usually discourage people from from saying and starting off their post with, if this post is not appropriate, moderators, please remove. Uh, by doing that, people automatically discount the post and the credibility. So, um, and really it's on you as the participant in the group to read uh, those terms of service. So just take a quick read through, but I would never start off a post like that because people don't really want to read it then. They anticipate that it's gonna be something either inappropriate or salesy or something that just doesn't fit with the vibe of the group. And on that note, it's always great to respond and speak about your expertise and share some information, but remember to not be overly salesy in these groups. Social media is first and foremost about being social, so participating in conversations is key. And another thing here, so be mindful of the group policy, the community rules. I'm gonna show you an example of that in just a moment. So when you're looking at the left-hand side of your Facebook homepage, You'll see here the list of pages. So this will be maybe pages that you follow or your own business page, but then you'll also see groups. So this is where you access this. Uh, you can also favorite some of the different groups or make them and pin them to your, to your menu as favorites. So if there's ones that you'd like to frequent, you can actually pin them there. And then there's different types of groups that are out there. So you might see some of the residential groups that are out there. There's mom groups that are out there. Uh, there's ones that are specifically made for people who maybe graduated a particular college. Uh, there's some, you know, funny groups out there. And then there's also plenty of ones that are industry related as well. Okay. So, whoop, I'm getting my webinar chat here. There we go. 
So for the social media managers group, like I said, there could be a lot of industry ones that are out there. So this is one that's an example. So this is a closed group. This would be one that you'd have to opt in uh, to get to. And you'd have to probably look into their guidelines. You would have to answer some questions in order to participate. Uh, but you can see some different options that are available here. So there's the discussion area that I mentioned earlier. You can also view other members who are participating in the group. And this is a great way to build some connections. Um, some groups even host events. So going back to the event discussion, and you may even want to run your own group. We'll talk about that in just a moment too. Um, but you know, you may even want to run your own um, events and have them right here in your own group. You can post videos, photos, and people even share files within groups. Now, one other thing that I want to point out here is that you can also search. So let's say you're a social media manager and you're looking for somebody or you're looking for people who have a need for Facebook ads. So you can search Facebook ads and you might come up with something like this. And this happens a lot. I see this in a lot of different groups out there. Hey, I'm looking for an expert level Facebook advertising course to take. Okay, this might be relevant, might not. Sometimes people name their budgets, sometimes not. But this is a great opportunity for you to comment in here and say, hey, you know, I'm a social media manager and it just so happens that I also teach advertising courses. So I'd be happy to chat more, send me a direct message, right? So that's a great and appropriate way for you to leverage group. Now here's an example of community policy or guidelines as I mentioned before. Uh, so social media managers are welcome. You can hear all the things, they, who they're looking for, but then the policies, right? So no self-promotion or spam, um, staying on topic, avoiding duplication, and then use of the moderator. So, you know, it's great to just be able to take a quick read through some of these and they're not all the same for all the groups out there. So make sure you take a quick read. And again, uh, don't be sitting there posting, oh, if this is an appropriate moderator, please remove, you know, it just turns people off. So take a look, people do take time to write up these policies. And if you're going to run a group on your own, take a look at some of the groups that you're already in and take what you left from their policies and say like, oh yeah, I, I don't want people to be self-promoting in my group, or I really want it to stay content driven. So we're going to stay on topic. Um, there might be some other things that you notice as well. Maybe it's geographic, you know, it's only people who live in a particular area or only people who work in a particular field. So now we'll move on to Facebook Marketplace. And this has become really valuable, particularly at a time like this, when a lot of people are looking to drive um, all, their, all their purchases, um, all their, all their purchases to, uh, you know, Facebook marketplace and, and do online e-commerce. So this is pretty valuable. So a couple things about Facebook marketplace, anyone can list products and services. So you can do this as a business or on your personal page. I've seen a lot of people who do a lot of their own, um, let's say DIY at home. Maybe they, um, are a maker of sorts. They create different things so they can list some of the things that they're producing. A lot of people also sell things that they're looking to move on. There's all the buy nothing groups that are out there and yard sale groups. So this is a great place for people to be able to sell those things, but you can even set up your own shop as a business on Facebook as well. Do you understand too that Facebook does have to approve the content and the items being sold? So as soon as you list it doesn't mean it'll be immediately listed. Facebook will review them. Um, and that's just to make sure that it isn't inappropriate or um, that it isn't violating any sort of laws or policies or anything else out there. And the next tip is that details are really important. So I'm going to show you what a listing looks like, but you really want to be as detailed as possible in what you're listing on the e-commerce groups. What's also important too, and for those of you who may have used a platform such as Etsy, is to make sure that you're responsive. In Facebook, you do get a badge for being recognized or being responsive to your buyers and prospective buyers. So it's really important to respond to messages, inquiries, and when people wanna purchase something. Your community can also leave you a review. So this is pretty valuable because then they can see if there is somebody that, you want, that they want to do business with. On the right-hand side here, as I mentioned, details are really important. So these are the things that Facebook Marketplace is gonna look for in terms of uh, what you're selling. So the first is a category. You know, is it an item for the home? Are you selling a service? Um, then you wanna have what you're selling, right? So it might be an item for the home, but then you might wanna put something like table 
Um, and you'll be more specific, like large dining room table, seat eight, whatever it might be. A price is certainly required here. Obviously, some people want to list um, things like, oh, you know, free consults. You can certainly put that in there as well. But I just recommend putting in some sort of price. Uh, location, you can put in a region or very specific, a town or city as well. And then a description. So I think it's really important to also provide a full description on what you're providing. Think about how you would describe your product or service. And if applicable, up to 10 images per product is available. So this is always great if you're, if you're selling some sort of tangible item, um, you know, leverage those images so that people can see it at all angles, they get a good understanding of what it is. Um, you know, you don't have to use all 10, but make sure you just take some good images because you're gonna get more people who purchase. So now let's take a look at what Facebook Marketplace looks like. So here you can see, um, oops. Here you can see, um, this is what it would look like. You're gonna go on the left-hand side here on your Facebook page and click on Marketplace. And now you can see the different top picks in the area. You can also go through and look at browse. Um, so you're just looking through all random items. Some of your groups also might have uh, an available marketplace and there's certain groups that are out there too. Like I said, the buy nothing groups. There's a lot of people who have industry groups out there that sell things. Um, you can see some here, some over here, like there's a vinyl records for sale. There might be even a vinyl group uh, that's out there. So you can search for different groups. Um, stores. So this is your storefront. So let's say you wanted to create an e-commerce storefront. This is where you would be found. Um, buying, selling. So if you're making a purchase, that would be buying. Selling is what you're selling. And then people can also save your items or you can save items that you liked or maybe had an interest in. And then if you want to sell something, it's just this big button here that says sell something. And from there, you're able to set up your page. Now you can also search by location. So let's say you're traveling for a weekend up to some place and you're like, oh, I wonder if there's just something, you know, I, I like to do antique browsing. So I wonder if there's particular items that I'm looking for. So you can actually use this location bar and search for that. And below that, you can see categories. So as I mentioned, making sure that you have a category listed for what you're selling is really important here too, because a lot of people know exactly what they're looking for and they're gonna click on categories. All right, so now we're gonna move on to Facebook Messenger. I know a lot of people think Facebook Messenger is just for uh, conversing with friends on a personal level. However, you can really leverage this for your business as well. So Facebook Messenger is a really powerful customer support tool. I know that working at the bank, I get a lot of inquiries through Messenger. People frequently send us messages asking about, hey, um, is this down? Or I need to get into my account and I've been locked out. Can you please help me? So it's a really powerful tool to have a private message um, to be able to converse with your customers. One word of caution here though is um, just like anything on social media or anything that's digital, uh, make sure that you're ap approaching communications in a professional way um, because these things can be screenshotted and shared of course even though it's a private message. Um, and you can't always verify who's on the other end asking those uh, questions as well. It's really difficult. So using Messenger for support, this is something that many of us are starting to see, um, particularly during this time where a lot of people are behind, um, behind the screens. Um, you know, doing business has always been a little conventional, but customers are starting to come around to using Messenger. And if you work in a business that let's say has um, a call center, those call center um, wait times are getting longer and longer and longer. And so a lot of your customers are likely going to be uh, reaching out to you via social media and sometimes via Messenger. So this is an easy way to improve quality customer care. And uh, Facebook Messenger, you can actually go into the Messenger tool and set up quick responses. So uh, maybe somebody's asking about your hours or they want to connect with you via email or they have a question about a particular product, you can put in those quick answers um, so that you don't have to be a slave to the messenger all the time. And what's nice about messenger is that later on, so if these customers inquire, you can follow up with them and send them a message and say, hey, um, you know, you can send them a message, a marketing message, you can send them a product offer um, or even just follow up with them in general. 
So uh, we've done this in the past to the bank where we launched a new website and we had a lot of people complain that they didn't like where we had the particular login button for the bank. So what we did was um, we took all those complaints and we messaged all of them and said, hey, you know, we understand, we apologize, we'll follow up shortly. And then we followed up with them and sent them all a personal message uh, via Facebook Messenger later and then uh, made them a nice little offer uh, for giving us that feedback in which we changed that button. So um, that's just an example of following up with customers, but it just makes that relationship stronger. Hey, we have a quick question that um, actually came through the chat um, in regards to, sure. can, you, can you give us some examples of services that might be for sale? Yeah, That's absolutely. Uh, yeah, so um, I've seen actually quite a bit of people offering services. So um, one of them would be, let's say, somebody who works in a plumbing business. They've offered services like that. Um, you know, tune-ups for your HVAC, so some of those kind of services. But then I've also seen people who have offered things like, oh, I can do uh, some content writing for your business. You know, um, I can write up a press release for you. I can do resume writing. So I've seen a variety of services like that. Um, you know, it doesn't just have to be in like the skilled labor industry, but it could be something like, oh, I'm going to do uh, a family photo shoot from the front steps of your house. You know, so things like that that you could see for different services that are out there. Great, thank you. Awesome. So, no problem. Um, so I'll move on to paid ads. Uh, I'm gonna talk about boosting versus campaigns and also touch upon um, audiences that are out there. So um, a lot of times when you go onto Facebook, you'll see that blue button at the bottom of your post where it says, would you like to boost this post? And um, that's usually just for that one post or one thing that you're publishing out there. But then there's also an entire campaign. So we're going to talk about the different um, parts of those and then also why you might use them. So going through why boosting a post might be important. So the first thing is um, boosting a post is helpful because you might not be ready to do a full campaign yet. So you want to put together you know, just, just one post. You're just dipping your toe in the water and trying to figure out how Facebook ads works. Um, so it's a good way to just get started and boost one post. One thing that I do recommend when boosting is to find a post that you really, really like or you think that is performing extremely well um, and take that and boost that first because you're gonna see a lot more performance out of that and get a good feel for how it works. Uh, boosting is also really valuable if you want to highlight something really special. Maybe you have a big event planned or a sale or a promotion or new branding or new messaging, whatever it might be. So you might want to use Boost for just that. Uh, as I mentioned, boosting top performing content is always something that's helpful. You can target your audiences as well. Um, through boosting a post. So it'll tell you, would you like to target this audience and what audience you might like to target. So that might be someone in a particular age range. That might be somebody who lives in a particular area or has certain interests or hobbies or works in a, in a certain role. So those are some of the areas that you can create an audience. And then you can save that audience from that boosted post and reuse it later. And we're going to talk about that in a moment. My one tip here is to not boost everything because otherwise we'd probably just want to be running a campaign. But I've also seen people who and businesses who have boosted messages uh, that have been, uh, let's say, like negative and you don't really want to share it out there. So don't boost everything that's out there. Um, plus, it can get lost in the noise. So really think about boosting as something you want to stand out from the rest of what you're doing and posting out there just one single focal point. So now moving on to campaigns. So why would you use a campaign? So maybe you want to run something longer. Maybe it's more than two weeks. Maybe you want people to get to know you better, awareness of your brand. Um, you know, again, this is kind of that longer term. Um, and you also want to think about for your campaign is using multiple pieces of content. So uh, maybe you have a couple of images, a couple of posts, a couple of videos, whatever it might be, and put those all together for your campaign. So this is something that's really structured. You're having it for a longer period of time and you have a variety of content. And one thing that I want to point out here 
is to also be extremely cautious over things like ad fatigue. So you might actually see someone who posts something um, and, or you might actually post something and then you're performing really, really, really well and you're getting a lot of engagement and then all of a sudden it dips off for a couple of days. And that happens because people are getting tired of seeing your ad in front of them. So I encourage you to just take a look at those analytics from time to time. And if all of a sudden that, that campaign or even that boosted post isn't performing well anymore, maybe it's time to readjust the message or maybe it's really, really time to turn off the campaign or to put out some new content. So just to put this into a different perspective from you, for you, think about if you're watching television and then that same commercial plays multiple times. Every time there's a commercial break, you see the same commercial, you're gonna get really annoyed, right? And even if the commercial had really good content, you're actually gonna get really annoyed and it's going to discourage you from buying that product because now you've gone from pleasantly surprised to now I'm just really annoyed about that commercial. So um, preventing ad fatigue is really important here. Quick question for you, um, Kate. Okay. Yeah. Yes, uh, Sandra asks, can you start with a boost? Uh, and if it does well, then turn it into campaign? Yes, absolutely. So uh, you can take, um, take a boosted post, for example, and uh, you can actually stop boosting it so you can turn it off. Let's say you had it scheduled to end next week you can turn it off and actually say, I want to use this as a campaign. So when you go into your ads manager, you can say use existing content and you can select that same post that you're boosting and add that to your campaign with a bunch of other posts as well. So that'll save you a lot of time too. Great question. Okay. So let's move into where you would be getting started with ads on Facebook. So there's a couple different ways that you can find this. Uh, so the first is going to that top right hand corner, uh, right under this little arrow here, which most of us go into to try to find some of our page information or other updates. Um, so if you just click here, you can get right to your page, of course, but then you can go down and click create ads. Um, and this is a great way for you to just go in, create an advertisement and get started right away. Automatically, you'll actually um, get generated an ads manager or a Facebook business page account. Um, you don't have to do anything. It's our, it's free. It's built in. Um, and if you're actually looking to get to just ads manager for ads that you're currently running and like we just talked about, um, boosting a post and maybe changing up to a campaign, this is where you could also do that too. So when you go to ads manager, you're actually going to find this under the left hand side and you're going to click ads manager. And you can see here, these are the different ways that you can manage your different advertisements. So you can go in here and um, change out your boosted post to a campaign. You can add more content to an ad. You can change your audiences. Um, you can look at your audience insights. So who's, who's clicking on, on your post? Um, who is putting things together and commenting and engaging? So that there's a lot of different things that are able here to help you plan for what you're looking for. And then measurement. So as I mentioned before, preventing ad fatigue is really key here. So if you start seeing that your ads are, aren't performing as well, this is where you'll find that information. Great, so once we get into the ads manager, this is where you're going to start building your advertisement. So these are the different categories you can select and you can do multiple ads at one time. If you're just starting out, I recommend just starting with one goal and one advertisement. Um, and the goal here is to think about what you want to accomplish. So if you just want people, um, if you just want people to get to know your brand better, right? You want to just spread who you are and you wanna get that reach that might be under the awareness tab. So you can select one of these. Um, the consideration phase. So if you're thinking about the funnel, right? The sales funnel that many of us are familiar with. So you've gone from awareness, now moving into consideration. Maybe you wanna drive more traffic to your website or to your Facebook page. Maybe you wanna get more engagement on your posts. If you have an app, that's where you can get more app installs. Uh, video views, lead generation, which is able to pe people able to fill out a form. Um, I talked about messenger earlier, but you can also do messenger advertising as well. And then uh, the next step into the sales funnel here is conversion. So that conversion to purchasing, 
um, driving conversions to your website, to filling out a form, catalog sales, um, and then ultimately in-store traffic. And I'm seeing a couple questions come in here. So I have yes, first um, um, Kate, some, oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we do have two questions. Um, one of them is, what would you recommend would be a reasonable amount for a two week campaign for a service business? But I also like to hear from you, uh, what would you recommend at all? How people could maybe think about how much to put into a campaign. But this was specifically for a two week campaign for a service business. Yeah, so uh, really great question. That's, you know, it's really based upon your comfort level and what you want to invest into it. Um, Let's say that your business is really targeted to a specific location. So um, if you're only looking for people in let's say a specific town or you're only looking for a specific crowd of people, uh, maybe you want to have a smaller budget. But let's say you're looking statewide or region-wide, um, you might wanna have a larger budget. So for most ad campaigns in terms of uh, let's say a two week campaign, I'd probably run somewhere between I mean, for me, for business, for a service, I'd probably look about 200 to $500, depending on what you're, what you're looking for. And when you set your budget with Facebook, you can set it in a variety of different ways. So you can tell them that you want the maximum daily spend, or you just want to spread out that spend over the two week um, campaign. Um, and again, you can adjust that from time to time as well. But um, for most, I would say 200 to $500 is a great place to start. Um, but if you're you know, just getting started, feel free to, um, you know, take a step back and actually, um, you know, start with a smaller campaign, maybe $100. Um, I think normally the, the base is like $20 to $50 to get started. Right. Thank you so much, Kate. And then a quick other question. So just to clarify here, ads or boosting is not free. There is a minimum spend, correct? Correct. Yeah. So uh, posting to Facebook organically is totally free. You can do that at any time, but if you want to run an ad campaign or boost a post, you do have to pay for that. Um, and that's important to know too. It's like something like um, if you were able to get a press release put out in a publication, uh, most of the time you don't have to pay for that. Uh, but if you want to get additional advertising space in a publication or a newspaper, you would have to pay for that. So it's, a, it's the same way of you can still get some things out there and, and get some eyeballs on it, but um, if you want to get more people engaging with it or a more targeted audience, you're probably going to um, want to put some paid advertising behind it too. Thanks. And, and is it still $1 a day, sort of the minimum? Yes, $1 a day is about the minimum, yeah. Yeah, but, but it also very important to note that as you increase the budget, you'll see that the reach increases as well. So the more money you put into a campaign, potentially the more people will see it, the less you put in, the less, the fewer people will see it. Um, but the minimum is $1 a day. And another great tip that I've heard from other folks, and maybe you mentioned this already, was to boost or convert into campaigns those posts. So say you put in a post that was completely free and it did very well. Mm -hmm. As you mentioned earlier, you can boost it. And then also afterward convert into campaign if it continues to do well. And those are the type of, um, that's kind of sort of the, the steps that you can take to find really great advertising. Yeah, if you're already seeing great performing content, then boost that and then add it to your campaign later on when you feel more comfortable. Great, thanks. No problem, thank you. All right, so we'll move on to um, automatic bids and placements, which this is really topical right now. So we talked a little bit about the different expenses that you might be paying for when it comes to advertising. And if you set your budget, let's say to $200, um, Facebook will not uh, charge you a dollar over that. So if you're setting it for $200, they're going to spend probably exactly $200 or really, really close to it. So, um, but they won't go over it. But here's something that I always like to touch upon is just automatic bids and placements. So if you haven't done any sort of Facebook advertising before, this is a really great place to start. And this basically means that, um, you know, they're gonna place the ads in front of your target audience when they find that it's gonna perform best and the most relevant um, audience and ideal time. So think about it for a minute. Um, we'll go back to television. 
Uh, so if you don't want to air to the daytime audience, right, for your ad, um, in your target is professionals, let's say, who work Monday through Friday, nine to five, you don't want to pay for airtime for people that aren't professionals that aren't, that are at home, right? So it's not the right audience for you. So what you want to pay for is people that are going to see it after that five o'clock time slot. So Facebook will also do that and take that. And they, of course, have tons of data out there to put this together. Um, so that's important to note too, is just your automatic bids and placements. I encourage people to select that first until you get really, really comfortable with a platform. I will say I've been working with Facebook ads for actually quite a few years now, and I still use automatic bids and placements because um, I trust that they're going to get it out in front of the right people. And I've seen evidence of that. The other thing that I want to point out here too, is in this red box here, you'll see uh, when you'll get charged. So impressions is one of the goals that's available here. Um, so your impression will be what people see. So people just viewing your ad, seeing it. Um, obviously there's a lot of value to that. People seeing your brand frequently. Uh, we know that people need to see sometimes up to 30 brand messages before they are in the consideration set for buying. Um, but then there, below there, you'll see link click or CPC. So that means more commitment, more conversion. People are really interested and that's actually at a higher value. So your impression might cost you cents, you know, a couple of cents here and there, but a link click might actually cost you a dollar or two. So, but there's more value in that link click. You can track that people are going to your website or liking your Facebook page or filling out that form. So it all depends on what your goal is. Um, if you're looking to accomplish some of those brand awareness type goals, um, then you would want to do an impression. But if you're looking for conversion or more engagement, that you, then you want to go after a link click. But just know that their impressions are going to cost less and link clicks are going to cost more. Now, going back to that uh, Facebook Business Manager page here, here's where you'll find uh, that information for automated rules. So if you go into that menu, um, you can see that there's the Ads Manager there and then Create and Manage Your Ads. And then you can click on automated rules. So you can change these at any time you like. It's pretty flexible with Facebook. Um, but just know that you can go in and you can see them at any time and change them accordingly. So we've talked about ads, but let's talk about audiences. So ads aren't just putting it out to everybody who's out there. You can get really targeted. So think about your goal and what you want to accomplish. And that's where you're going to get started. If you have already put together, let's say a persona of your ideal buyer, um, I'd recommend this is where you start is sit there and say, okay, my ideal buyer is this age. They live here. They have this for interests and they consume media, you know, through Facebook or through uh, industry publications or whatever it might be. So those are things that you want to map out before you start looking at your audiences. So once you have that put together, um, then you want to look at, um, ways to build it. So you can also use things like lookalike audiences as well. So, um, I listed out a bunch of different ways to create your own audience, but you might also want to use the tool called lookalike. So lookalike is, um, a way to reach new people who are likely to be interested in your business because they're similar to your best existing customers or to people, um, people who are already following your page, people who are already making purchases. So this is a really quick way to get started. This is how I got started using um, Facebook advertising was I started using lookalike audiences and I was able to see a lot of people coming in, making purchases, engaging with our page. Um, so that worked out really, really well. So I would just encourage you, maybe that's where you want to start. And then from there, you can go in and build an audience based upon these um, different things here like geographic, age, interest, employer, and so forth. So just a couple of notes on audiences. So some targeting is limited and it is dynamic, so it changes from time to time. So I encourage you to go in and take a look at how your ads are performing from time to time. Uh, try not to be too obsessive over it. I know it's some, for some of us, we want to like launch it and we're really excited and then we put it out there and we check on it every single day. Um, but one of the things that I encourage you to do is just to go in and um, take a look, see how it's performing maybe every couple of days. 
don't adjust it too much. Um, a lot of this is based upon data that Facebook will continuously grab based upon your advertisement. Um, but give it a couple of days and if things aren't performing well, you can always adjust it. And things also do change based upon what's happening for trends. So, um, you know, right now we're dealing with a pandemic. So anything that's like a keyword that's related to coronavirus, pandemic, COVID-19, um, the virus, you know, any of those terms are being prohibited right now by Facebook and rightfully so. Um, so you might find that if you put those keywords into your advertisement, um, Facebook will likely reject it. However, um, you can ask for a manual review of some of your advertisements. So let's say you sell PPE equipment and you want to advertise. So you can actually select when you're putting your ad out there in your audience that you want Facebook to manually review it because it's relevant to your industry. A lot of people try to cheat it and try to put in, you know, keywords that are trending just to try to get that visibility, but um, it's really just not a good way to cheat the system. And another note here, um, targeting for political gain or financial gain also is prohibited by Facebook. All right, so let's move on. So now I'm gonna move on to some reopening ideas. So obviously we're all kind of stuck at home. We're working through um, what's going on, but we have to start planning for reopening, right? And I'm sure many of us are chomping at the bit to try to get there. So a couple of ideas. Um, first of all, share your plan, how things might look different, how things might look different for your business, how you expect your customers to engage with you. Be very transparent. And this is also great content because your customers will feel like you're taking care of them. Um, I shared this earlier actually in, in another um, talk I gave, but a recent study was done regarding customer loyalty during the pandemic. And um, consumers are really paying attention to how employees are being treated and to how um, businesses are treating their customers as well. So 52% of employers are taking better care of employees as very, 52% of consumers, sorry, described that employers taking better care of employees as very important right now, and it's gonna influence their buying decision. And 32% of them intend to buy from companies that took care of their employees during the time of crisis. So, you know, sharing your plans, sharing how you're taking care of your customers, taking care of your employees, even yourself, um, if you're a solo entrepreneur, is really important for you to share. The safety measures are really important, things that you're gonna be, um, ways that you're going to be protecting people. And this also just helps to create awareness of the ways that we're gonna be doing business from now on too. And then maybe you have a treat for customers who are gonna be returning to your business. So I've seen things out there like the first 25 people get a free tote bag or a $5 gift card when you book your appointment or get $10 off. You might want to put that out there just to generate some customer loyalty. So another way that you can put out there is being really authentic and sharing that you miss your, your customer, sharing that you're thinking of them. Um, you can't wait to see them again. You know, those warm, positive thoughts are another thing that's worth sharing for sure too. Of course, you can also put out something like daydreaming a little bit. I've seen a lot of people say like, what's the first thing that you're going to do when this is over or Ask your customers what they would want uh, from you. You know, is there a particular event that they'd like you to put on? And then finally, sharing how you've been giving back to the community and taking care of employees. As I mentioned earlier, this is extremely crucial. Okay, we have a quick question. Do you sure. think um, Facebook is, in your opinion, would Facebook be worth, worthwhile for business to business sale? Yeah, I think so. I mean, you can target businesses out there. Um, a lot of people do list their employers um, on their personal Facebook pages. So I do think it's valuable for business to business. Um, and does it, does it matter like what the price point is? For example, one of the folks who are listening today, they sell industrial laser systems, which sell for like $100,000 or more. So is that something that, you know, you think in your opinion, Facebook would be an appropriate channel for them? Yeah, I, th I think it'd be um, appropriate, you know, certainly from a paid advertising standpoint, uh, you know, I think that that would be, you know, targeting who, you, who your target audience is and doing some paid advertising directly to them. Um, 
day-to-day -day posts you might not find are as valuable, um, but you might find that strictly paid advertising is really good. Um, you know, and you might find some people that have some different interest groups. We talked about uh, groups earlier, but you might be able to find some groups that are out there too that might be industry specific for what you're looking for. Yes, that, that's, a, that's a great tip, absolutely. If there's industry specific um, pages and conversation groups, because you mentioned this earlier to Facebook, social media is all about having a conversation. So it's not just about setting out advertising and marketing, it's about engaging with customers and other people in a conversation and hopefully, the, in this case, about your products and services with other folks. And so how important would you say um, Facebook social media activity is to improve your website's Google rankings? You know, that's a, that's a big mystery, I feel like. Um, you know, I think it's, it's definitely important, it's impactful. However, um, you know, they, <laughs> Facebook and Google tend to be very secretive on their ranking systems and how things get put out there. Um, but it is impactful. Uh, back when I worked at a marketing agency, we actually did some research and studies on, um, you know, businesses that had a really strong web page with lots of great keywords and SEO, and, uh, but did not have a social media presence. And compared to businesses that had a strong social media presence and a strong web page. Uh, and we found that the ones that had a social media presence actually benefited more uh, from Google rankings. Um, that obviously changes day to day. I mean, Google uh, ranks things differently every single day. And again, they're secretive. Um, but I do think it's imp impactful and, and it is searchable. Um, some things from Google are searchable onto platforms like Facebook and Instagram. Great, thanks. And um, Keisha was um, noting here on the chat too that um, uh, you have mentioned that Fe Facebook red flags political financial gaze type of uh, post. And then she just mentioned that isn't marketing considered financial gain? So she, she's just taking a little bit of clarification there. Yeah, um, no, great question. Uh, so uh, marketing, yeah, it's, it is considered a financial game. What, what I mean by that is, um, you know, looking at things like scams or frauds or things that are, um, you know, financial keywords too. Um, so that's something to watch out for. I mean, I work at a bank, so I have to be very cautious over what I use for financial keywords. Um, you know, and, and Facebook will flag a lot of those. So I have to ask for manual review. Um, and that's anybody who's looking for, you know, um, posting things that are in a regulated industry like insurance or financial services, investments, and so forth. So Facebook's very sensitive over that. And um, there's like a lot of money scams out there. A couple years ago, there was a really big one for things like Bitcoin um, and that digital currency. And so Facebook um, kind of looks at that in that same light. So um, when I mean financial gain, I kind of mean like that scammy side of things, but also on the other side, any regulated industries. Great, thanks. No problem. So I was talking about some grand reopening ideas uh, for everybody, but there's a couple of examples that I wanted to uh, share with you. So this is um, a cheese shop that shared. Um, they uh, have been opening every now and again to do some pickups, but this was like a really authentic post that they put together. I thought it was really heartfelt. Um, it's something that really resonated with their customers. Um, but you know, they said really a big thank you. We're so humbled. Um, wishing them well, that kind of thing. So I think that's really important too. Um, this is another one. This is um, a gym that shared their, and this is back in April. So this has been a little bit of time now, but shared their ideas for reopening. Um, and again, sharing your plans for reopening is really important. So uh, letting people know that things might look a little different for business right now, or that uh, you have certain expectations of customers going forward. And then this was another one, again, very heartfelt. This is, um, you know, a, a brewery, obviously no longer able to have their tap room open, um, but they shared, you know, a, a thankfulness to their partners that they have out there. And they shared a message with their followers and, and encouraging people to tip their team who are not working currently. So um, again, a really nice heartfelt message, um, you know, and, and the picture really says it all. And we've all kind of felt that way, but you know, don't be afraid to share content like that because it really makes people stop and think and, and have a different appreciation for your business. And so with this uh, PowerPoint here, I also have um, a bunch of different 
uh, resources available, a lot of great guides that can help you with a lot of the things that we talked about today. Um, you know, happy to uh, make sure that this PowerPoint gets over to you. I think um, this will be available for all you to view, but um, yeah, happy to take any questions in the couple minutes that I have left. And um, I know that there'll be some more questions coming in and some demos as well. Yes, thank you so much, uh, Kate. Appreciate it. And today's webinar will continue on. Uh, we did say it will be until 2.30. So after Kate is done with questions, I will go ahead and give you guys a few quick tutorials on a, on a few of the items. And I'm, I'm willing to take any requests on questions. Anything in particular you actually want to see uh, happening live, see how to use set it up on Facebook. Uh, but I will, I'll, I'll be covering like how to uh, create an event, add co-host to that event, as well as how to make, how to make those events uh, recurring because a lot of our folks who are listening are in retail and various industry who want to have events. And in this particular case, not in-person events, but also Facebook Live type of events. So I'll cover that. And also how to boost a post and create a very specific, um, uh, oh my gosh, what is that? Um, audience a very specific audience with those demographics so i'll show you how to do that in just a few minutes but if there are any other questions for kate i know we've answered a few of them while she was presenting this is your chance to either type your question in the q a uh area or raise your hand by clicking on that participants button and then another screen pops up to the right of your screen you can click on raise your hand and i will go ahead and unmute you so if you have any other questions today Please go ahead and do that. Um, and uh, I'm gonna ask uh, Kate to unshare her screen and go ahead and share your video so we can see you. I know um, bandwidth is a little bit low on your end. Uh, we're all having a little bit of technical difficulties with our internet here and then, um, but hopefully we can see you. Oh, there you are, great. We can see you, <laughs> awesome, awesome. So Kate, um, you know, here's, here's a quick question for you. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, it comes from, let's see here, how important is uh, your, uh, oh, wait, we already answered that one, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> how important is LinkedIn for promoting your business? So I know we're talking today about Facebook, but this particular um, uh, participant has a question about LinkedIn versus Facebook, probably. Yeah, I think that, you know, LinkedIn is super valuable. It's, um, you know, if you're particularly in the business to business space, it's really helpful. Um, much like Facebook, you can also leverage things like groups and you can do that from your personal profile. Um, you can also create groups that maybe are industry specific. So I think that's really beneficial too. Um, you know, LinkedIn, I think for business pages, it's up to you if you wanted to run one in the same manner that you do a Facebook page. But for a lot of people, it's connecting on that personal level too. So if you're working, let's say on the sales side, or um, you know, you're a solo entrepreneur, uh, you're the face of your brand. So I think LinkedIn is something that's really beneficial. Great, great, thanks, thanks. great advice. I use LinkedIn a lot for um, promoting a lot of these webinars and connecting with other professionals in, in the various industries. Another attendee asks, what kind of regular not paid posts are useful for businesses to post other than COVID related issues? Yeah, that's a really great question. I think that's what a lot of people are looking for right now is what do you post right now? Um, that's not just about the pandemic because we're all getting battered with those posts lately. Uh, you know, I think some of the things that are happening behind the scenes, you know, some of the things that you do day to day, people love to see those posts. Uh, if you have employees who are doing things in the community, um, I've seen a lot of people show their work from home life. Uh, their new furry coworkers that they have too. So, you know, some feel good stuff is always great to post out there. Um, you know, don't be afraid to also put out some, some different product language, you know, just because we're in the middle of a crisis right now doesn't mean that marketing stops. So you can certainly still promote yourself and promote your products. Just make sure you're doing so in an empathetic tone. Great. So Kate, Thank you so much for your time today. I know you have to go. If we have any other questions, we'll make sure to, um, um, I'll go ahead and answer those. Thank you for your time today. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Excellent, thank you so much. And for those of you who are still on the webinar, I wanna show you a few things. So here's our Facebook page. Um, our, our photo here is not loading for some reason. As I said, our internet's a little bit slow today for some reason. Who knows, but um, I wanna show you 
very briefly, I'm gonna show you how to create an event and add a host to it. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and just create a simple event here. Uh, click the event buttons. After I got to my Facebook page, I went to the left side, click on events. Um, now it does, Facebook does give you the option to, it, it does recommend the photo, typically whichever photo is already in your Facebook page. You can go ahead and change that and pick any photo you like. Uh, we're just gonna leave that on for now. Um, you can also click on this uh, uh, top right button here, choose from photos, which means you can go back to your profile in your Facebook. Any photo that you've ever uploaded to Facebook could be used in any of your events. Um, then you will want to add a short and clear name for your event. And again, this is, um, this is for example, for some of you who are giving services, this event could be a webinar or a training that you're offering either paid or free to potential customers to, you know, to help them learn more about the valuable services you can provide to them. If you are a retailer, your event could be, you know, reveal like, what's new on Fridays, like reveal of new arrivals of products that you have in your store on Fridays. And you could have a recurring online event where you are in front of a camera like this. You can use your phone, you can use your laptop. Um, you can, you know, right now there's a lot of tripods uh, available that you can, you know, very easily hook up your, your phone to it and be able to record yourself showing your customers a product that you're offering. And again, this is about having a conversation. So this is not about completely being yourself, hey, buy now and, you know, things like that. But it's like, hey, I guys, I just want to show you these new products that we have in the store today. Many people have asked about them. I'm here to answer any questions you have. And so you can engage your audience. So when you do a Facebook Facebook Live event, I highly recommend you can do it just by yourself, but I also recommend maybe you have a partner or someone else that can help you feel the questions and um, that are coming in through the screen. So real quick, so you put the um, event name here. Just coming back to this event name. And then we're gonna click online event because this is gonna be an online event, presumably or it could be an in-person event, in which case you wouldn't click on here. You can add a link or you can add specific instructions on how participants can log into your event. Perhaps there's you know, other instructions you can put in there. You can put in there the, the, the website. Then here, the location, you can pick a particular location. If it's obviously this is only if it's an in-person event, you would type in an address. This is the, uh, this points to the office, our location, our office location. You will type a brief description. So type brief description there. And then uh, category. Category is super important guys, because this is where people search for events. They're gonna search sometimes through categories. And if they showed interest in particular events, you wanna pick the right one for, um, for many of our uh, events, we always select other because that's really where it kind of falls into. Um, but there's so many other uh, items here that you can pick from. Uh, then you can select the start date or end date as well here. Let's see. And here's where you add co-hosts. So one quick thing about co-hosts is that your page, your business page, um, it's better if you already liked, you know, the other business page so you can add them as co-hosts. So for example, we've already liked the, the, the Small Business Development Center website has already liked the Center for Women and Enterprise page. So I'm going to start um, looking for Center for Women Enterprise. I see right there, it pops up. And so I can add it here as co-host and, <clears throat> excuse me, um, you can see that it's pending. Um, you will want to give a heads up to whoever other or group that you're adding as a co-host. You can, you have to give them a heads up that there's going to be, uh, that you've asked them to be a co-host for that event. So let's see. Um, then in the bottom here, you can add a schedule and this is where you can do recurring events. So if you wanted to add, <coughs> excuse me, if you wanted to ask, this is, um, 
you know, the, this is a recurring event. So part one, part one event and specific date and time. And then there's a part two of the event. You add this specific date and time or a title. Then you can have that and people can see that it's going to be happening on the same type of event. For example, the Friday reveals of those new products that you're getting to your store is going to be happening every Friday at specific times. So you can add that there. So I'm going to go ahead and click cancel here. And I'm going to leave the schedule. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and click cancel here and um, check out. Uh, there's a few questions on the Q&A here. Let's see. Um, Kay asks, did you set up a business page or a community page for MSPDC? It is a business page. It's not a community page. It's a business page. And we did um, have as, um, as our service is business advice, business consulting. Okay. So Dion asks, booster post versus event. How do you decide which is best? Great question, Dion. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I'm just running a little bit of dry throat right now at this point. Um, but booster post versus event. So they have, they have different purposes. So if you have an event, I would absolutely 100% recommend you do an event because that's, you know, an event meaning that where you're going to be showing something and sharing with people um, a presentation. It could be short. It doesn't have to be like an hour presentation, especially on Facebook Live. You can do five minutes, 10 minutes, however long you need the presentation to be, and it can be saved on your website for later, later viewing for other folks who missed the live version, you can save it on your, on your, on your uh, feed and folks can go back to it, share it, like it. So as an example, when we did our, um, when we did our uh, initial webinars, we were streaming them on the website. So I'm going to go ahead and, and um, cancel this event. I'm going to show you, um, leave. <clears throat> so we did a lot of live events on our website for the initial webinars. And you can find those under, uh, under a playlist that we created for webinars. So these were all live events. Uh, and they were all recorded on Facebook. And now folks are watching them. So now I can see that. You know, back six weeks ago, I had a live event and there's been 443 views of that even after um, the event. So after it happened and here's another one with 860 views and so on. And you can see you can leave them right on your page. And so if you have an event, um, I highly recommend you use the event tab. If you have um, just an announcement or something like that, that's when you would use a boost. Uh, that's when you actually use the boost is if you have a post that's doing very well. And I'm going to show you right now here on, let's see here, when you go to insights on your, on your Facebook page here, you can see all these different um, great uh, statistics on your page. You can see the page views, how it's gone up and down. Uh, likes, post reach, and as you can see, we could definitely use more likes, guys. So if you have a chance to check out our Facebook page, um, go ahead and give us some likes, give us some love. Uh, really appreciate that uh, as well. So let me see here. So in terms of posts, let's look at posts real quick. Uh, if I click on posts, there's all the you know up and down all the different posts. So you can scroll down here to see which posts have done, been doing really great and. Obviously, the one where I had that live webinar, that did great. And so I, if I click on that, it will bring me to the actual post, or I can go ahead and boost it from there. So let's see, let me move this over. So uh, let's see here. You, I can create a post with a video as well, but if I can always go to boost right from here, and go ahead and go through all of this setup here. So that's the difference between like an event and, and boosting a post. So let's see, we have a few more questions here. Uh, is there a fee to post an event? No, uh, Beverly, there's no fee to post an event. It's absolutely free. Can you delete save posted videos? Uh, is the question Robin asking. Uh, Robin, yes, you can. I believe you can delete a posted video. Um, and if you have any issues doing that, 
you can um, check and you can go in and, and reach out for help through the Facebook help, but yes. And you can hide them as well. There's a way that you don't have to delete them. You can just hide them temporarily. Um, of course, I will always advise anything you put on the internet, doesn't matter where, um, make sure it's information or a video or something that you don't mind people seeing because you know, what happens, what's put out on the internet kind of lives forever, so to speak. So uh, just make sure that you have that there. So would I, would my email, would I email the training from today? Is that the question, Julia? Would you email your own today training as well? So for today, for all of you who have registered either on our website or put in your email address when you logged into this webinar, we will follow up with the link to our, um, and I believe I may have put in one of the answers to our website, msbdc.org. And then we have an archive of all of the webinars that we've been ho hosting for the last uh, several months. And the last couple of webinars that we've done last week and this week are not on Facebook. They are on our page and as well as on YouTube, if you want to find us on YouTube. But we're asking people to come to our page to see those as well. Uh, to kind of track who's watching them, but you're welcome to check them out on YouTube as well. And we will send you a copy of today's uh, presentation from Kate, uh, her PowerPoint, um, as, as long as you've given us your email address and your contact information when you registered. So I think those are some of the questions here I see. Let's see. Yeah, so, um, so real quick. I believe I've answered a lot of your questions. So the last thing I want to show you is when you do boost an event, um, how do you select um, your specific audience? So we talked about audience demographics, but what does that mean? So I'm going to pick uh, any post here. Let's see here. That's um, some of these posts obviously says boost unavailable. Maybe it's just a type of post, a picture, something that you put up, but some, some of them you have, uh, it is available for boosting. So I'm going to go ahead and boost this post. This is an interview that I gave on Thursday, on Tuesday, actually. And um, here on the top, this is really important, by the way. Sometimes some ads, depending on the content, may not be, a, uh, may not run. So Facebook gives you the heads up. And so if you get this, guys, that says here, your ad may not run, do go ahead and click request manual review. It may take a little bit longer for it to run, to, for the boost to actually uh, go ahead and run, but I highly recommend it. I've done that several times for some of my uh, posts, and it, it always works better when, when someone live sees your post and sees that it's totally appropriate, there's nothing wrong with it, and go ahead and approve it. It's better that than not clicking on that button and then getting uh, a notice that says your ad didn't run and you were all like excited because this ad was running and then you find out that it wasn't. So, um, so here you go. So what results would you like to dispose? You pick those, um, either one for connecting and chatting with potential customers um, or you want to more reactions and engagements, all that, that's all up to you. What I wanna really focus on right now is this audience area, because this is so important. And I think Kathy, uh, Kate uh, mentioned this in her presentation, um, but I wanted to go into it a little bit deeply because this is very key in terms of who sees your posts. So here automatically on default, it says people you choose through targeting. And it's location, living in the United States, uh, in Springfield, Massachusetts, 18 to 65 years old or plus. Or it could be you can click on people who like your page, uh, but since we don't have a whole lot of likes, maybe like 500 or so, and I really wanna reach a lot more people than just the people who like my page, um, I might choose, I could go with people who like my page and their friends, that may be appropriate, right? If you want to extend your 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 network and perhaps uh, reach to some of your customers' uh, friends, that might be a good one. But here, people in your local area is another choice, and it kind of gives you like a little um, a mile radius here, a little circle. So we're in the middle, and you have the choice. You can actually pick how many miles far away from your location. How is this helpful? Well, if you're a gym and you've 
realize that most of the folks that come to your gym or perhaps your store or to your office live within 30 minutes of your location, you might want to choose under 30 miles, right? Because it's, you know, probably 15, 20 miles away. That's about how long perhaps on a light day of traffic. If you're here in Western Mass, you can definitely travel, you know, 15, 20 miles in 30 minutes. If you're in the, in the Eastern side of the state, it's probably gonna take you a couple hours, uh, depending on the day. But, um, so you will want to go ahead and pick whichever distance from your location you want to reach. And again, this is information that Facebook already has on all of their users, they know where they're located, so. All right, so you say we pick 30 miles, that's fine. Um, that would be fine. But say none of those options make sense to you and you want to go ahead and create a custom audience. So you will click, click right there and say create an audience and always, always give it a descriptive name, not just like audience number one. That doesn't tell you anything. So say, um, for example, we could say, uh, business owners in Springfield, Springfield only, for example. So I'm just gonna make this audience for business owners in Springfield only. And men and women is fine, 18 to 65, that's the longest range, right? So I want adults, right? Not, not um, underage folks. So the 18 to 65 plus, you know, that's fine. So Springfield, Massachusetts, that is my default for you. It may look different. Say if, I, if that wasn't there at all, then I would start typing Springfield. Springfield, Massachusetts, of course. Springfield, Massachusetts. And again, it does give me this little um, uh, triangle, upside down triangle to decide how far I want it to be from Springfield. I'm gonna choose about, you know, 15 miles will be about what I would like uh, folks to do. Um, it is a little bit, it's, it's also on the Connecticut border, but perhaps, as you know, folks who work in Connecticut might have a business in their area, so that's fine for me. Here's where it's re really cool, is this uh, targeting demographics in terms of interest. So I always click on suggestions. That's the first place I click. And then I go to, for example, business owners, and then I'll go to, you know, own business. And you can click on a, a lot of these. But say if you have a different type of business than ours, um, say this is more for like, um, you have a yoga studio, for example, you will start typing yoga. And then, you know, you have, you click on yoga and then you click on suggestions and then it gives you other interests here. This is the type of demographic in terms of interest. So yeah, you know, if you have a yoga studio, probably you have meditation classes, you know, you have mindfulness, of course, you want people who are interested in, in well-being, health and wellness, et cetera. Uh, how do you know you're in track with this? Is right here, Google, um, Facebook tells you, your audience size is defined, good job, potential audience reach is 200,000 people or so. And if you click on that little eye, it kind of explains what all that means. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, I will delete this audience later on because obviously I'm not gonna be using it. It's more for yoga folks, but, uh, but say I did save it and then I could come back. And now when I, when I look at my options here, it shows up right at the bottom, business owners in Springfield only. So obviously if I had done this for a yoga studio, I would have said like yoga, um, potential yoga customers or folks interested in yoga in the Springfield area or something like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop my screen there and see if there's any other questions here. It looks like we've answered them all. And uh, if you have any last minute questions for me, you can go ahead and type them in the chat or, or put them in the, in the Q&A. And Sandra, thank you so much for your comment. I appreciate it. It looks like, uh, it looks like folks, everybody's okay. So let me see if there's anything else I wanna share with you today. 
I do want to thank all of our sponsors, all of our partners for helping today uh, with putting together this series of webinars. Uh, Kate did a great job earlier and we really appreciate her time. Once more, I'm putting up on the screen, oops, I'm putting up on the screen um, the contact information for all the folks who are collaborating with us on these webinars, the Center for Women Enterprise Score, Valley Community Development, Franklin Community Development Corporation, and um, as well as Common Capital, Mass Growth Capital Corporation, which is not listed in here, but is one of the funders of many technical assistance providers in this area, as well as the Small Business Development Center. All of our contact information is there and uh, feel free to reach out to us. We want to thank you for attending today's webinar. And again, if you, um, if you have any other questions for us, feel free to email us. I see John, you did ask a question. Do you have a marketing Facebook person you can share with us? Uh, no, John, unfortunately, the marketing Facebook person, it's me for my own business. Um, but I am sure there are many great professionals out there that we can um, connect with. And if you reach out to a business advisor at my office or with any of our, our very great partners, I am sure they'll be able to share with you names of local folks who have the skills necessary to help you with your, with your marketing with the business. Thank you so much again for attending today and we'll see you next time. Have a great day.